are definitely the coolest player in the AATV garden right now. Anvil. Anvil. Anvil! Nice M4. I've got one just like it. Get out! I'll give up. Such a nerd. That stuff's way too hot. Welcome back to AATV. I'm Tom Avoy Hibbard, and today we're going to talk about my L119A2 build. So, for those of you who don't know what an L119A2 is, that's the British Army designation for the current UKSF service rifle, so the one that's used by the SAS and the SBS. They don't use the standard issue L85A2 or A3 rifle. They use carbines made by the Canadian company Colt Canada, what used to be DeMarco. Prior to the A2, they had the L119A1, which looked a bit more like a conventional M4A1. However, had a myriad of better tolerancing and small differences, which made it a much better rifle. These were first seen around 2016 in some leaked photographs from a UKSF operation. And Airsofters around the world, and of course particularly in Britain, very quickly decided that they wanted to make clones or replicas of them. A small team of very committed UK airsofters managed to convince Angry Gun to make the front end rail, which really is at the heart of this build, and things progressed from there. The real L119A2 has a monolithic upper, that means the upper receiver and the handguard are one piece. This wasn't really practical for a lot of airsoft users as there are so many different platforms and variants to build one on so the handguard standalone was the right decision to make at the time. There are a number of small differences between this and a conventional AR that make all the difference. Of course the most noticeable is the front end with its partial rails. The upper receiver on the real ones is slightly different to the standard AR flat top and I'll show you some photos of that. I do intend and I have just ordered some 3D printed bumps to make the modifications and changes to this upper receiver. Once I've got them in place and blended them in, I'll be doing a painting tutorial and finishing off this rifle. So this was originally a GHK M4A1, which I bought because of, ironically, because of the trademarks, and then I decided that I wanted to do a UKSF impression or loadout, and therefore I needed the rifle. And the kind of games I want to play with this thing aren't really games, they're more exercises or training sessions, and actually being able to fire a buttload of shots really wasn't important and I wanted every shot that I did fire to be as fun as possible and the most fun I have shooting is with the gas blowback rifle. There are a load of very specific parts you will need to collect if you want to get an accurate replica. Uh, big thank you to Gaz and particularly the Reptile House blog. I'll link the Reptile House blog posts down below um, for the full parts lists and help with the build. The trades and receiver modifications were done by LC Engineering Outpost, did a fantastic job. Thank you very much, Jim. So on this, I have a black Magpul CTR stock issued. They come with a tan one. Uh, I'm gonna paint this so I wasn't too bothered about the color. I have a Magpul PTS ASAP plate, that's as issued. They don't use the standard castle nut, they use the older style stock ring. And this comes from Heyo or Howe. Never quite sure how to pronounce it. There is a specific latch, ambi ambidextrous charging handle latch. I may end up cutting this one down, like some of the reference photos I've seen, because this does this sticky outy latch here does tend to grab onto clothes and bits of gear when it's close to your body. I've got a real Colt ambidextrous fire selector in here. Uh, one of the nice things about GHKs is they can take real parts to a certain extent. So this is a real Colt ambi fire selector. You'll also, if you're going to do that, you also need the, the real Colt detent and spring. I've got the How Ambidextrous Colt Canada mag release, so I can release the mag from both this side and from the conventional position on the other side. Obviously, the Angry Gun Rail, Magpul RSA sling attachment point. Not sure what I'm going to do about slinging at the moment. I may go to QDs or I may use paracord loops. Well, I need to play games to find out. I've got a black Magpul AFG2. These would be tan on the issued rifle. Again, I'm painting it, so I don't mind. 
angry gun rail, Element LA5 laser designator with the UKSF correct stickers from J, thanks J. Angry gun, surefire, correct surefire suppressor and flash hider, correct claim flash suppressor. We've also got a repro surefire body with a real KN2 head. I'll probably pick up a real surefire body at some point if I can find one cheap. Currently sitting on it is a new Prol clone Comp M4. Not, again, I'm not entirely sure what optic I want to run. There's, a huge, there's quite a big choice. Um, this is quite cheap and it's just about correct that the mount isn't brilliant. The Colt Calendar stock tube has a different profile from the conventional M4 buffer. That's been turned down and the threads cut down. You don't need them as much when you've got this slot stock ring. The receiver has some small modifications to it. Extra slot, a little dovetail at the back here and we've machined in an extra slot into the double tooth here. Full set of trademarks and unique serial numbers on both sides. British Army go for safe R and auto, so for safe repetition and automatic. And that's repeated on the other side because it's ambidextrous. Had the barrel cut down to the correct 10 inch length as well by LC Engineering. So all in all, I'm super happy with this at the moment. AATV is now on Patreon. If you want to help support the channel and making projects just like this and bringing reviews to you, a small contribution would be very welcome. If you can't make a financial contribution, then just a like, subscribe, and a share is always welcome. You can probably guess from this bunch of disparate parts I have on the desk in front of me, that today we're gonna to build, finally, my L119A2. No one currently in Airsoft is making a complete rifle. So you, whatever you do, you're gonna to have to piece it together from another one anyway. This still has all the far control components and a few bits and bobs in it. So I need to transfer this stuff into the new receiver, get going really. So let's assemble the upper receiver first. I think that should get things out of the way nicely. These are bright because they've been machined in. So eventually they'll be painted. So they're using a maple leaf hop and Crazy Jet Barrel and Maple Leaf Hop. The original GHK Hop unit broke on this while I was doing some testing, so I've had to uh, replace it, source it. One of the main reasons I went for this Maple Leaf unit is you can get to it from the inside the receiver. One of the downsides of doing one of these builds is on the on the normal GHK M4A1, you can access the hop window, take the, pop one of the handguards off, you can adjust the hop. Uh, when this slot is hidden by the barrel nut, for the rail so you can't get to it so i wanted to be able to get to it so this rear rear facing maple hop i can either adjust on this wheel or i can adjust using the grub screw so this barrel has been shortened by lc engineering outpost so shortened to 10 inches which is the correct length and then i've added a really nice brass thread okay barrel nut goes down Tighten up the barrel nut by hand. I'm going to be a bit on the cheeky side and just use this little short one. Um, I'm going to order the correct one at some point. Uh, so when I do, I'll just swap them out. So there's two grub screws here and they lock onto the rail in these two channels. And let's drop the rail over and see if that gas block is hidden. Yeah, so you can't see the, you can see the front of the gas block. The gas block's not correct, um, but you can't see the gas tube, so I'm not too worried. So again, that's a cosmetic thing that I will sort out with a different part at a later date. So I just want to make sure these rails line up properly. Before I do the grub screws up, so I'm just going to get the scope, drop it across the two rails. All right. So now this should all be aligned using this as a bridging piece. So that's the rail onto the receiver. Should all be lined up. Okay, and this is a angry gun. FH556216A Surefire clone. 
get here, and then there. You can see down into the hot unit there. This is the lower, and this is my old lower. So we need to start moving components from this into this. After a bit of wrestling, uh, got the hammer trigger in and the gas. With a fun device, it's quite a fun device. So now to put the fun device in. Well, that was a painful experience and no mistake. Top so fit. That's the detent, the real cold detent. Right. Stays down to release the trigger, reset, yeah. Auto, fire, yeah, need to push the, so this is a Heo copy of the Colt Canada mag release. Four. That can go straight into this one. Okay, so the rear take down pins now in and captive. Excellent. Now we're going to do the buffer spring detent. Spring. D10. Love it. Just seen this on YouTube. A little pin here. Push the detent in. Spin your pin. Right, and then Okay, lower fire control and your controls installed. Very happy about that. Everything's working. Next, we're going to put on the other thing they come issues with is a Magport ASAP plate. This is a PTS copy, but great for my purposes. I'm going to go wild, but there we go. Okay, well, we are, I think, pretty much there. So that's on. Excellent. And there we go. That is it. It's been a very long process, 10 months from kind of having the idea to getting it done, getting all the parts together, finding the time, wanting to do the range test originally. Uh, and then obviously the current crisis situation didn't help either. So yeah, but no, super happy. Have you done any challenging builds of your own or made a custom gun? What is it? Please let me know down in the comments. I'll be really interested in finding out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.